So, case number five. Nearly there. We've got 15 cases. So, no. 37-year-old male patient presented to ED with low GCS. The patient was noted to be bradycardic, so an ECG was done. And this was the ECG. Yeah? Okay. Good. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about raised ICP, raised intracranial pressure, because it looks like you know we're inside out. What happens with raised ICP in the ECG? So you get long QT. We've said that in the QTC. You've got deep symmetrical T wave inversion. They call it cerebral T waves, and sometimes they call it roller coaster T waves for obvious reasons. You get bradycardia as part of the Cushing reflex. Bradycardia, hypertension, and irregular breathing. That is a peri uh, herniation sign. And you get an ST elevation and depression, and you get a U wave. So these are things that happen to the ECG in a patient who is coming with raised intracranial pressure. So be careful about this. CNS pathologies like subarachnoid hemorrhage or raised intracranial pressure or tumors can cause ST elevation in the ECG. Do you know that? You can get ST elevation because of a bleeding in the brain. So the patient will be unconscious, so you will not get the answer of, do you have any chest pain? All what you will find is unconscious patient, ECG is showing ST elevation, and positive troponin. So what will you do? Aspirin, clopidogrel, heparin, thrombolysis. <laughs> okay? Be careful about this. Primary circulation problems, they do not affect your D. If your main problem is in the C, the D will be okay. Those of you who've been practicing emergency medicine for a while will know this. Cardiac patients, they die looking into your eyes. GCS 15. GCS 15, VF cardiac arrest. They do not have a gradual decline in the conscious level and stay unconscious for a while and then they die. If they do this, then something else is there. Okay? So, this is the catch with this one. Let me tell you a nice, uh, a nice interesting story, and this will be the last long story that I'm going to tell you. But this one is, is important. So I was doing my um, critical care training in UK, and, and, and I was in one of the hospitals. And I was starting my night shift, and I've been handed over a patient who's just arrived from the emergency department. She presented to the emergency department very confused, very agitated. She, they had to tube her in the emergency department to get a CT head. The CT was done and showed big brain edema. Her sodium was very low. I think it was 109 or something. So she was hyponatremic with brain edema, very confused and agitated. They had to intubate her, moved her to the critical care unit, and I started the shift when she was entering the room, going to her bed. They were connecting her to the ventilator, and we've had the handover as this. And I said, as part of the handover, because I like ECGs, any ECG is done, and they said no. I said, fine, I will do one. So I started my shift by doing an ECG for her. She's now tubed, ventilated, paralyzed, so cannot talk. And I found an ST elevation in V1 to V6 in this lady. And I was like, OK, I know that the ST elevation can happen with raised intracranial pressure, and she's got brain edema and raised intracranial pressure. We know this. So, but fine, let's repeat ECGs. So I've done three ECGs and I noticed dynamic changes. I was in a hospital with no, with no cardiology support. So I had to phone the cardiologist in another hospital to get the advice. So I phoned the cardiologist who said, let me speak to my consultant and I'll come back to you. And then he came back to me and said, my consultant said, bring the ICP down and the ST elevation will, will improve. This is all secondary to the raised ICP. I was like, fine, OK, I will do my best. But I've sent troponin. And the troponin came back as really high. And I was like, OK, now I've got dynamic changes in the ECG. And I've got positive troponin. And I've got an intubated patient, so I cannot take any history. And I don't know what happened to her to be that agitated. 
So I phoned the cardiologist again and I said, you know what, the situation is a bit different. Now I've got dynamic changes in an anatomical wall distribution and positive troponin. So he phoned his consultant and he came back to me and he said, my consultant said, bring the ICP down and then ring me back. I didn't like this, but I was like, fine, okay. Then by chance, it happened that the medical registrar that day in this hospital was a cardiology registrar and he was my friend. So I phoned him and I said, can I ask for a favor? Can you come and do an echo for this lady because I'm really worried about and, uh, and I, I need an echo. So he came and he did the echo for this lady and he said, the apex is not moving. She's got a regional wall motion abnormality. So I phoned the cardiology registrar again and I said, <laughs> positive ECG, positive troponin, and positive echo. And he said, oh, no, let me speak to my consultant this time. <laughs> and he phoned his consultant and came back to me and said, my consultant said, bring the ICP down, and then and only then call us back. And I was really annoyed about this. So I phoned my consultant. And I said, this is the situation. What do you want me to do? And he said, well, what do you want me to do? I mean, we phoned cardiology. They said, this is the situation. We've got nothing to do now. So fine, we're going to stick to their plan. Unfortunately, this patient died a few days later. And uh, again, I left the hospital without knowing the postmortem. So till today, I don't know whether she died from a primary cardiac problem or from the brain edema. But I was really annoyed because of what happened. At this point of time, I knew about the ST elevation that can happen with the raised ICP. And I knew about the positive troponin that can happen with the, with the um, raised ICP. But I didn't know that actually you can get echo changes with the raised ICP that resemble an MI. You can get echo evidence of regional wall motion abnormality just because of a raised ICP. And this is something called neurogenic stunned myocardium. So you know what? The cardiology consultant might have been correct. It might have been that all of this was because of the raised ICP. We will never know now, but I'm less angry about this case now after knowing that, okay, maybe they were right. So I'll never forget this case. And you will never forget it. So a 75-year-old female patient presented to Hampshire Hospital because she was found unconscious at her bed. So this was three months ago. I was the team leader for this lady. She was found in her bed, GCS of three out of 15. So they brought her to ED. An ECG was done in ED because I am the team leader. I like ECGs. And this was her ECG. So I've got the anesthetics at the head end preparing for intubation. And then this ECG came up and I was in a hospital with no PCI facility. And the question started coming. Do we need to ring cardiology? Do we need to think about a transfer to a PCI center because? This is a STEMI. So what do you want me to do now? I'm the team leader for this lady. What do you want me to do? GCS is three. No history. Found unconscious at her bed. Can she be unconscious because of the STEMI? Good. No way. STEMI will not make you unconscious. Then there must be something else. So I didn't give aspirin, because you can give rectal aspirin if you want to. I didn't give aspirin. I didn't give any antiplatelets. And I did not speak to cardiology. And I said to the team, I am happy that these changes are raised ICP changes. I want a CT for this patient immediately, CT brain. OK? And this was because of this. And this was her CT brain. So that was the bleed into the brain with a massive midline shift. And this patient died a few hours after this CT. So can you imagine giving aspirin, clopidogrel, thrombolysis to this bleed? She died anyway, but at least not because of me. <laughs>